Hi, this is Kevin at HoganTechnologies.com. I thought I'd uh, run through a little video here, kind of elaborating on the whole traction circle post I wrote the other day. Um, I have some PowerPoint presentations. It'll make it a little bit easier to understand, and we'll go through that now. This is your basic traction circle here, and this is uh, it's kind of a theoretical idea on how a tire actually works. If you look at this side of the circle, this is with your tires basically in full turning mode. This is maximum turning here. And this is like uh, maximum acceleration, you know, gas pedal all the way down. But you notice in order to turn, you cannot be fully turned and use all of your tire for turning and use all your acceleration at the same time it's a little bit of a give and a take both ways this the edge of the circle is basically representing the maximum amount of traction in any direction that your tire can have so you can only accelerate so far and you can only turn so much if your tires are pointed straight ahead basically you can use all of the tires grip to make to make the car go forward and for acceleration or if you're off the gas coasting, you can use all of your tires grip to turn left, but you can't do them both without sacrificing a little each way. Um, the same thing goes for braking. If you ever noticed, um, if you turn your tires, you turn your car real hard going into the corner and you slam on the brakes, the car will break loose because you're trying to use too much steering angle and too much brake all at once uh, and you're overloading the tire if you actually do that your basically your tire will end out out end up outside of your traction circle out here someplace if you under utilize your tire it'll end up underneath inside the traction circle to get your car and to use the most of your traction available on each tire at all times you want to keep your tire as close to the edge of that circle as possible um, I have another little diagram here I'm going to show it's about tire slip and grip here let me get this up here okay this graph here kind of shows the relationship between the amount of grip your tire can put out versus the amount of stretch that's put into the tire. If you look at this sloping line here, you're starting to stretch the tire and the grip is increasing as you stretch the tire. You get up into this area here and the tire stretch is starting to slow down and you're actually getting into an area of friction where the the friction between the tire and the track is mainly um, what's giving you the grip. If you look right here, this is the peak of where you want to be. This is where you want to keep your tire at all times. This is the point at which your tire is stretched at its maximum potential and you are going to produce the most amount of grip and the most amount of force with that tire. This is the place where you want to be. On the traction circle, this point is right at the edge of the circle. Um, if you don't stretch that tire to its maximum potential and you get it up here, you're going to be running in this part of the circle and you're not even going to be using the amount of traction that the tire could be providing. If you go over the edge and the tire starts to slip and slide um, on pavement, this is where the tire will start to squeal because you're actually breaking the strands of, uh, of rubber and the the braking and the energy released from the braking of the strands of rubber is what gives you that squeal sound that's going to be in this area back here you're actually you still have a lot of grip i mean if your tire is sliding a little bit you still got more grip than the down here but this is on the edge of breaking loose i mean you don't want that you want to be anywhere up in here to that absolute pinnacle point um, from a theoretical standpoint, to keep your tire at that point at all times is going to be really hard. But if you keep in mind this whole traction theory and the whole traction circle, you're going to be a lot better off in the end. Um, 
it's it, it's a good idea to keep this in mind as you're tuning your car to realize what it is and to, to really strive to balance and to keep your tire your tires at the edge of that circle at all times you know really think about how your car is loaded on each corner the weight transfer how much steering angle you're putting into it and you're going to into a corner as versus how much braking you're using or how much acceleration you're using when you're coming out of the corner if you're turning your tires at a very large um, turning radius and you're coming out of the corner and you're trying to put the pedal down and accelerate you know either one end's going to give or the other end's going to give because you can't put you you can, the tire only has so much traction and you either use that traction for turning or use it for acceleration and braking. I mean, or it's a give and take for the two. Um, can't do everything and it can't, the, the tire has only got so much it's going to give you. So that's uh, my talk for this evening on tire traction. Um, if you have any questions, you can email me at kevin at hogantechnologies.com or kevin at wildincorporated.com. Uh, for anybody that's in our area, we still have some spots left for the um, Wild Incorporated Tech Seminar. Um, you can register for it. It's only $25. It's pretty cheap for the amount of information that's going to be given out there. Um, you can register at Wild Incorporated, and the number down there is 262-544-9453. Um, I'll talk to you later. Have a good night.